uh, most people are going to come up here and talk about how disgusting that is. But one of the things that has become clearly evident is that we have an issue in this country of people who value leisure over liberty. So I want to talk about that a little bit uh, over the next few minutes. And uh, I'm going to have some action points for you guys. So bear with me here. I actually have a scripture here that I want to read. So this is directly out of John 15. It's talking about the disciples' relationship to each other. Okay, so as you, on this side of the street, as you guys look around, okay, that's your friend, right? Fellow disciples. It says, this is my commandment to you. Love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. You, everybody here say that he's chosen me. He's chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give to you. This is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. Now, with that being said, I want to talk about something that happened in the 70s and the 80s. I'm 40 years old, so I wasn't alive in the 70s. I was born in 82. But those of you who are old enough remember that in South Korea, there was massive revival that happened in the 70s and 80s. So South Korea went from 2% Christian in a Buddhist nation to 33% Christian in one generation. Today, it's only 1.7%. It's actually less than it was before the revival. In the last 10 years alone, they've closed 10,000 churches. Why? How can this happen? Because despite the revival that happened in the 70s and 80s, the older generation could not figure out how to pass on the gospel to the next generation and guys what did Reagan say that freedom is never more than how many generations one generation away from extinction so what I want to do is I want to I want to leave you guys with three very practical action steps because coming here and rallying together and protesting something as disgusting as what's going on across the street it's good it's a way for us to exercise our First Amendment right. But how do we see long-term change? The first thing I want to encourage each and every person with an earshot of my voice to do is to resolve. You, you might hear know what the word resolve really means. It means that you've laid everything else aside. You've resolved within yourself to prioritize liberty over leisure. Resolve within yourself to prioritize liberty over leisure. Do you guys know how many uh, how many people it takes to volunteer for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo? It's about 30,000. And people do it willingly. Do you know how many, how many volunteers the Trump campaign had in Houston back in 2020 in the greater Houston area? Less than 1,500. More people are willing to volunteer their time for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo than for the Trump campaign. We need to resolve to value liberty over leisure. Guys, we can either make excuses or we can make history, but we can't make both. The second thing that you guys need to resolve yourself to do is to serve and to get involved. Get involved where? At church in your local school boards, 
Guys, I'm, I'm actually running a candidate for Huffman ISD school board as we speak. Find out where you can get involved and where you can serve. Mentor a teenager. Find someone that you can mentor. Educate yourself and vote. Don't just vote, educate yourself on who you're voting for. So where can you go to get educated? You can go to the Patriot Academy with, with Rick Green and David Barton. You can go to the Convention of States. You can register, get involved with Convention of States. There's CCDF, County Citizens Defending Freedom. Look these groups up. Katie Christian Magazine, right here in Katie, is a great resource. In Montgomery County, we have Mama Bears Rising and the Montgomery County Tea Party. Surely we have places like that here in Katie, amen? The third thing that you guys can do is inspire and teach others to do the same. Because the Great Commission is not about going and seeking converts. The Great Commission is about making what? Disciples. What are disciples? Disciples are learners. We go out there and we make learners. So you can do this by holding small groups. Become a coach with the Patriot Academy. Build bridges. Don't burn bridges. We need to learn to communicate. One last thing that I want to share here about someone that had an opportunity to build a bridge with a younger voter, but instead choose to burn a bridge down. Back in January, earlier this year, Montgomery County Tea Party, my representative, Dan Crenshaw, was asked by a young lady named Lana about a statement he made about Jesus being a hero archetype, comparing him to Superman. This is the kind of representation we have representing us, conservatives, so-called conservatives, in the Republican Party. He was asked, and instead of building a bridge, he responded by saying, don't question my faith. He had an opportunity to build a bridge with a brand new voter who was 18 years old and instead he built a wall. Guys, we have got to learn to stop being triggered, learn how to communicate in ways that are gonna build bridges and not walls. One last resource kind of as a bonus that I wanna to give to you guys. Will Witt wrote a book called How to Win Friends and Influence Enemies. I highly recommend that you guys check that out. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. Jameson Ellis, appreciate it.